Begin the card of Mesech Zbam Metzir Daf Samach Gimel. We begin on the bottom of Samach Beis and Beis. Two lines up at the bottom of the Yamad, where the Gemara is uh, middle of trying to explain our opening Mishnah in our Perik. We said Eizehu Neshech, Veizehu Tarbis. So Neshech, we really Neshech and Tarbis are two terminologies of the same idea. They're, they're just two lavin, as the Gemara said. So what's the Mishnah saying? Neshech and Tarbis. Neshech is Ribes Daraisa, and Tarbis is the term they're using for Ribes Drabanan. What was the case the Mishnah described as Ribes Drabanan? So we're trying to figure it out in the Gemara. The words of the Mishnah were, Lokachem men achitim bediner zahav. He, he went and he bought from him wheat for a golden dinner, which is 25 silver dinar. He bought a kor. And v'china sharon, that was the, the market value that was at that time. Then chita went up to the price of 30 dinar. And, and then he tells him, look, give me my wheat. I want to sell it and buy wine. He says, look, let me transfer you your wheat, uh, which is now worth 30. And, I, and, and you have by me wine. But he doesn't have wine. He says, look, I'll give you wine instead. But he doesn't have wine. That's what the Mishnah said, that, that that's awesome. So our Gemara on the previous, on some Beis and Mabez, was trying to figure out exactly how to understand this case. The Gemara had said, if he doesn't have wine, who cares? But there's the Mishnah of Ayin Beis that says that if Yotza Hashar, if the market value is out, that it has already been set what the market value is, even if the seller doesn't have, yes, someone else does have, and that wouldn't be a problem about like ribbis. So on that, Rabbi said, yeah, but our Mishnah is not the same. Our Mishnah is not, the guy is not paying money now. It's Babalocha Bidmei Maskin, and he's transferring money that's owed into something else. And now we learned the Bryce that said that if someone is transferring the debt, if let's say a guy owes someone $100, $100 and he stands it by the granary and the guy says, look, I don't have the money. I'll give you instead for your value for all 12 months, I'll give you whatever the weed I have. That's Aser. Why? Because the Mishnah says, ki sir It's not like when money comes to your hand. Since money's not coming to your hand, it looks like ribbis because you're going to be making money off of that debt that's owed. That's Aser. Abai said that can't be the explanation of our Mishnah because why does our Mishnah then say, Ain loy, the guy doesn't have the wine? Even if he does have, that Mishnah on Daf Ayn Bey seems to indicate that it still would be a problem. So Abaya which was the last interpretation we said, had a very interesting interpretation based on the b'risa of Reb Chia, which actually he wanted to say it's what's called the Bar Meshim Mutarim, but it's Asim Neharamas Ribis, and he wanted to say a very different case about um, be, uh, he, that our Mishnah was talking about where a guy actually asked the guy to lend him a certain amount of money. He says, I don't have money, I have, I have instead wheat, and he gives him the wheat, and then he goes and he buys it back from him cheaper, and that's what the Gemara wanted to say, that that looks like ribbis. On that, Rav had a bunch of questions, and he says, the words of our Mishnah seem to indicate that you're not talking about the case of buying. It talks about a case of where a guy has a debt, similar to how we were ex- interpreting up until this point. So the Gemara fell off that, and that's where we're going to take off a different interpretation of still how to explain the halacha of our Mishnah. In the Eretz throughout the entire world, and everyone should have a gezinta zimmer. So, in this discussion in today's daf, are the machlekes of Rabbi Yerbiyan regarding Eisna Mana B'damim. Could a person go ahead and uh, pay, but not get the uh, the fruits back at, at ultimately, but he's going to get actually um, money back instead? Would that be okay? Or would that again have an appearance of of ribbis? Let's say someone was trying to collect a hundred dinar from his friend. And he makes his field into a conditional sale. If I don't pay back, you can get my field. And in the interim, the buyer is eating the produce. Would that be permitted or not? And there's two interpretations in the Machle. Because Abai says it's the difference between them is when one of two options might be ribbis, if that's forbidden or not. Or the Machlekes is, like Rabbi says, Ribbis amenas lahachzeik benayu. Even if, let's say, it ends up being Ribbis, but I'm going to give it back to you afterwards if it turns out to be, is that okay? Or would you say, no, once you violate it, you violate it, it won't help to give it back. So in other terms, the concept of today's daf are, Paiskin al shar shubashok of avat You could go ahead and set a price for something that the market price has gone out, even if the guy doesn't have the produce right now. It's not a problem about any element of Ribbis. 
the concept of mali demehen mali hein nami aminan, which is terse terminology, we'll see that in the Gemara, but there's a, a concept of like, if the guy has pay raise, then you could go ahead and do a certain type of a transaction. We're going to say, even if he doesn't have it, simply because he has the money, and the money should be the same thing as the pairs, as we'll explain in the Gemara. And the, the phrase, well, if I would have, have meaning the concept of, uh, uh, of that, even if the guy doesn't have uh, that, you can go ahead and uh, you can make him a price if the market value has gone out, even if though he doesn't have, so then it looks like you're lending him the money, the seller, and then he's giving you back more value than what you gave him. Should be a problem, but Reb, it's not because what are you what are you giving me a benefit? If, if you didn't have, I could go to Shili and Hini, and I could get it there cheaper for the price I have right now. So you're not not benefiting anything, so that it wouldn't be any problem about uh, the money that I'm giving you, as if I'm getting lending you money on interest. So begin the current off, and the bottom of some base base, base second line up in the bottom of the Yamad. Again, the Gemara is trying to explain. How do we understand the halacha of our Mishnah that it's explaining a case of ribis de Rabbanon, specifically the way it said that the, the guy bought wheat for a certain amount, the guy didn't, uh, and, he, and when, that he's going to give him it ultimately. And then when he, when he, when he, buy, when, when he wants to get the wheat because the price of wheat went up, and he wants to finally give me, give me my wheat I bought, says I don't have, I'll give you wine for the same amount. If he doesn't have wine, that's what he said. Oh, that's a problem about Ribbis Rabbana. What's the pshat in that halacha? So Elam or Rabbah, rather Rabbah says like this. Says, and now I'm going to pass away. The, 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 the Tana Rabbi Isha is going to come and greet me. Why? It's good. Because I customarily explain Mishnai is that Rebbe was Saisim, like the Brisa that Rabbi Isha was Saisim, which Rabbi Isha was a Talmud of, of Rabbi Yudan. He, he wrote Brisa, which were not included in the Mishnai. I explain those Mishnahis like Rabbi Shia, similar like Rabbi says in Baba Kamen, of you're now from a base. And, and I'm going to explain our Mishnah like Rabbi Shia. Because the Tanya Rabbi Shia told the following Brisa, which is different than the Mishnah we brought from the Ayin Base on the previous time. We, tr- we attempted to explain something similar like this, but we asked a question. Rabbi Shia is exactly, he fits in exactly the Allah of the Mishnah. He says, Someone was owed a mana, and he goes to collect from his friend this hundred dinar. And now he's standing there by the guy's uh, granary, by his, by his field. And he says, Tell me, Moisai, give me my money. I want to purchase wheat with the money that you owe me. says to him, Don't worry, look, I'm, this is by my granary here. I have wheat. I'll go ahead and give you wheat instead. You don't have to get the money for me to buy wheat. Go ahead, make on me. Let's establish right now how much wheat you, you deserve based on the market value that's right now for the price of wheat. Now, they did that. Now, what happened was, okay, the price of wheat went up, and the, uh, the, 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 now all those people who were storing the wheat, since it, it's time for the wheat to sell, because now is when you get, make your money on the wheat. Somebody said to him, tell me, this was a, whatever, a week later, a month later, whatever it was, says, give me my wheat, and I want to sell the wheat, to buy, to buy wine with it. So Mali says to him, no problem. Yes, I have wine that I'll give to you. It's like stocks, like you don't know what's happening with it. You need this to get that. Don't worry. You don't need the wheat either. You want wine from the wheat? I have wine too. Save us on the like So go ahead and establish for me, according to the market value right now, of what wine is. And uh, I'll give you a transfer of that, what I owe you in wheat, into wine. Okay, fine. A few months later, now is the time, the high, the high price of wine is when you want to sell it. It's time for that. So Amalei says, give me my wine. I want to sell that and, and buy, buy oil. Amalei says, don't worry, Shemin Yeshli. I have oil. I'll give you the oil instead of, instead of the wine. Go ahead and establish for me whatever the market value of, of oil is right now. I'll, I'll transfer that, what I owe you, into oil. Okay. Now, this was the case. Says the Braisa, it depends. Kulam, regarding all these steps, wheat, wine, oil, im yeshloi, if he had those things, then mutra, it's actually permitted. What's the chiddush in this? So like Rashi explains, we do not say a concept what's called, as we mentioned in the previous Ahmed, the lav kisore habali yadidami, which is, but the guy wasn't giving him any money right now. No. 
That's not a problem. As, as we'll see throughout this parak, if you're not giving money right now, there is an appearance of like, it's not a sale, it's like some type of a, like a, an extension of a money that's owed and you're making money on your money, which is what Ribbis is. No. If the guy, if the seller has the item, so the buyer gets the rights of it from right now, even though he didn't do Mashiach on the wheat or the wine. So when it goes up in price, it's not Ribbis. You're, it was in your own possession. The price went up to, from 25 to 30. That's okay. Because if the seller would want to back out, he would be violating the Mishapara, which is you're not, allowed to vi- you're not allowed to back out. Now, that's only if he has the wheat or the wine and all these things. So the sale is like done and it's already the buyers on some level. But if Ainloi, but if he didn't have this wheat, this wine, this oil that he was constant, con- uh, continuously transferring, then Usr, then it would be forbidden because it's not like any money came to the hand of the seller. When, when he gives him money, so then you could be pricing. Then you could go ahead and make up a price, what's the current market value, even though he doesn't have. Why? Because the buyer could have acquired it with the money, I mean, the, the seller could acquire it with the money that he got from the buyer because they could, you could get wheat because the, the Yatza Hashar, the market price has gone out. That means to say that there's wheat on the market. But this guy who wasn't getting money at this point is he owed the money to the guy. The guy's saying, hey, oh, you owe me. He says, oh, okay, mate, put it on me on wheat. Put it on me on, on wine. And he didn't have it. So he's not getting money now. And he also doesn't have it. So that would be similar to Ribbis. Because basically you're extending a loan and I'll give you back more money for that extension. That's Ribbis. So says the Brisa, if he has... Okay, that's okay. If he doesn't have the item, that's forbidden. Now we're going to explain in a second. Right now, it says the Gemara, and how does this explain the halacha of the Mishnah? Umay, lokach, when the Mishnah says that lokach imenu chitin bedinu zahav, hakur, you know what that means when lokach? It means lokach ba'al va'asai, which means to say he owed him in, 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 the, in the beginning a golden dinner for the loan that was owed to him, he transferred that into uh, a dinner's of worth of chitim. But then the guy didn't give him the chitim because he didn't. He said, look, I, you want the wine? I'll give it to you instead for the wine. But then if he doesn't have the wine, oh, that's the problem because that's what Rabbi Yishu was saying in the Bryce. So you have to have it if you're transferring and not getting money actually right now. Now, Rashi actually says he doesn't like this gear of these last four words. Umay lakach, lakach ba'va asay. He says it's what's called a pirish meshubish. It's a, it's a mistaken interpretation that was thrown into the Gemara because what, what they saw in Rebbeishia, Rebbeishia's case that the Gemara is saying, that Rabbi is saying, the Allah of Mishnah is based on, was Neisha Bechaber When the guy was collecting, he was owed him 100 dinar. So from there we see that if he would give him that money, even if he wouldn't have the item, it would be permitted. So therefore they are uh, uh, in misinterpreting our Mishnah, explaining, oh, what does it mean, lokach techitin? Didn't mean he actually bought it. It means he bought it with the loan. Says Rashi, it's not the case. You don't have to distort the Mishnah like that. Because if Aisha was, was, um, was, was, was talking about a different type of case, because um, he, he, he was talking about the, 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 the first wheat, and he was telling us that if the guy has, it's permitted, even though it's not like money's coming to him right now. But if it doesn't have, it's forbidden because he wasn't getting money right now. And it's not, it's not enough, Yotza Ashar. But the Mishnah, when we said Ein Loi, was going in the case of the wine. Because the wine is from a loan that was owed from him from already the money of the wheat that he was supposed to give him. But for the wheat itself, we didn't say anything about Isra or Mutter. Even if the guy doesn't have the wheat, it would be permitted because it is Isra Baliyadai. Isra means not Isra, but it means the coin. The Isra is a coin. That the coin's coming to right now, then, so of course it means lakach. He actually bought the wheat. The wheat don't, doesn't have to have the wheat right now because they're getting the money right now. It was on the wine that we said, him ain't loyayin. So Rashi just says, Tom, you don't need these last four words. It's not true. Lakach can mean he actually bought the wheat. But I upon him, this was a good interpretation of the lakach of the Mishnah because Rebbe is not like we said on the, the Mishnah uh, that we tried interpreting on the previous Amit. He says exactly this, that it's if you do have, it's okay. 
If you don't have, it's not okay. This is exactly what the Mishnah was saying regarding the wine. If you don't have, then this is like the ribbis de Rabbanon that's going to be forbidden. Now, once we brought in this teaching of Rebbeishia, Amarava, he says, Shema minam Rebbeishia There's three halachas we learned that from Rebbeishia's teaching. Again, which we introduced because we wanted to explain the halacha of Mishnah. But once we're saying it, there's three things we could learn out from there. Shema minah, first thing we learn out is the Mamidin Milva. You could, you go ahead and uh, establish a loan that you have on someone else and you could establish it agabe peris, meaning you could now be make a set price on what the market value of the produce right now to say, look, you owe me a hundred dollars. You, uh, you know what? I'll give you throughout the year a hundred dollars worth. You come to my store, I'll give you a hundred dollars worth of apples. You're allowed to do that. And what's the chiddush in that? The lawyer, I mean, we don't say, oh, because that's actually what we taught in the Bryce on the previous Ahmed. And this is actually what Rebbeishi is disagreeing, and this is actually what we had asked on the interpretation. And we said, you're right, it's not like our Mishnah. This Rebbeishi is exactly this point, that um, even if the guy has uh, the produce, um, it's going to be, I mean, the Bryce in the previous stuff had said that it's going to be usser because the, the guy's not giving money right now. The guy's not giving money right now. Even if the guy has, you come to his field and he has weed, we said, no, that's not going to work. Bish is not like that. Bish says if the guy has, even though you're not giving money right now, then it's not like uh, any problem about, about ribis. That's point number one. So you're permitted to prepay an item without money, even with a debt that the seller owes him um, as long as he has the item right now, which is the second point, actually. The Shema Minah, who, the Yeshloi. That's only if that it would be permitted, only if at the time of the sale, the seller has the item. But if he doesn't have that item, then you cannot... Uh, tr- transform this uh, loan onto uh, a sale of a prepaying of a sale of of the of the produce, but you could be paisic to uh, make this prepay um, if money was uh, tendered, as the Mishnah teaches later in the Vayin Beis Mabez that Yatsa Hashar if the if the market uh, price is, is out there uh, paiskin. Which we explained the mission, like we taught in the Bryce Rabisha, if you give the money, so then that would be okay. It's just we're talking about if money was not given right now, then it has to be, as the second Shema Mino is saying, that he has the item right now. And the Shema Mino, and the third thing we learned out is from the fact that we said that in the case of Rabisha said, he gives manchit limka. So we said, okay, the guy says, you owe me $100, fine. You know what? Put it, you want, what do you want it to buy? Wheat? Eh, I'll give you, I'll give you wheat. So then when it comes time, time to sell the wheat, so he said that, okay, so now he says, I want the wheat because I want to buy wine. So what happened is, is that he says, no problem. It, price of wheat went up. I'll transform that into wine right now. So he's giving him the higher price of wheat for the cheaper price of wine because, again, he wants wine right now so that when it goes up a few months later, he will be able to sell the wine. So there's a third thing we're learning out from that. That each of the Rabbianai, most of the holds of Rabbianai. Because this is actually a machlekis, which we're saying like Rabbianai, the Um Rabbianai, he says, if let's say someone set a price on produce and it came time to sell it. So he's coming to claim it from the seller that he wants it and the guy doesn't have it. So you could get the money back from him according to what the current uh, market price is. Why? Because says Rabbiane, Mali Hain, what's the difference if you get the item itself? Mali de Mehen, what's the difference if you get back the monetary value of that item? What does this mean? So the Idma, we learned the Machlekes, which will explain this. The first opinion does not hold like this. Rav Amma, he says, Oisin Amana Bepeiris. Amana means like in faith, in good faith. So if a guy gives money in good faith, according to what the current market price is, that's out there in the street, on the condition that you'll give me produce throughout the year, even if the price of wheat goes up, which obviously is a benefit for me now that I'm paying it right now. But but you cannot do this uh, payment in good faith for the payers to ultimately get the money when it goes up in price. Because since you're paying with money, and the guy's going to be giving back with money, and he's giving back you more money than you gave him, well, that looks like ribbis. 
So says Rav, you cannot do a mana to get back gumim for the higher price that the wheat's ultimately going to go up to. That's Rav. But Rabbi Yanayama disagrees. And that's who Rabbi Yishia in the third Shema Menah is saying like. He says, no. Mali hain, mali demayan. Who cares if you get back the item that you're buying or its monetary value? Meaning, because what do you see from Rabbi Yishia? From Rabbi Yishia, you see that the guy was owed wheat and he's getting back wine instead. Wine is not the item you bought. That's the way Tais explains for Rashi is essentially a monetary payment. It's the demehen. And you see here, Baisha holds like Rabiana that, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to get back the actual item itself. You can even get back the monetary value of the item that you bought. However, Mesebe, the Gemara asks on Rav, from Rabiisha that we were just saying, Rabiisha in the third Shema Minah, says like Rabiana, now the Gemara actually used it to ask on Rav. Rabiisha said, Kula regarding that case down on the top of our Ahmed that we said from Baisha. We said, regarding all the stages of the wheat and the wine and the oil, if he has it, much it's permitted. Now, the thing is over here, originally, meaning, meaning no, now the guy is getting back dumb because the Grash explains this point that he had set on him the monetary value of wheat. And what's he getting back? And now he's not getting back wheat at the end of the day. He's getting back wine, which is worth more than what he gave. Now, in the beginning, he didn't buy wine. So like Grash explains, that's like getting monies which is like bartering, but like it, that's really what money is. It's the monetary value of the wheat. So according to Rav, how you allowed to do this, it should be forbidden because you're getting back something else, which is like monies. So Rav, he says, no, it's not difficult. Why not? Because it's talking about Mashach. This story that we said from Abayishia, originally he actually did Mashiach, he drew the wheat in the beginning. He pulled it to himself. So... Um, when he's getting back the monetary value of the wheat, it's his own because it went up in his in his in price in his own possession. Because the moment he did Mashiach, so it's not a loan anymore. He already received his debt. And all the cases was when he did Mashiach. Says Gemara, if the guy did Mashiach, uh, so he acquired it. Of course, that when it goes up in price, it says what, what was the necessity of saying that? Says the Gemara, no, El Kivin Shiyich LeKaren Zavis. He didn't actually do Mashiach. It just, it, the guy put it aside in the corner. And like Rashi tells us, that teaches us that designating it is also something significant. And that's also why it would be permitted. I Meaning generally, it, it would be Merzi Karibis. But here, when they set it aside for the guy, therefore that wouldn't look like Ribis. That's, that's, a, that's one approach. Another approach, Shmuel Ami says, no, the reason why it's not difficult on Rav is because Hamani, who's the Tana of the Brisa of Rebeshia, that's saying, that if he has these items, he's going to be permitted, which is seemingly contradicts Rob's, who says, no, he, even if he has it, it shouldn't be permitted because he's giving him back something different than what he paid for, which is like dumb him. And, and that's, I thought, in least I'm on the him. No, because Homani, who's the time of that, of that Bryce Rabbi Hudahi? Homani says, Sad Echad Beribis is Mutter. What does that mean? What does it mean that there's a one side possibility of Ribis? So when you have interest, that's not through a loan. It's through a sale. Sometimes it could come to interest, like over here. If the price of the pay, pay risk goes up and the guy pays him back money, well, that's ribbis because you gave him $100 and the price of the fruits went up to $150. And then he's like, I don't have the fruits. I'll give you back money. Guess what? You just did ribbis. Now, if the guy doesn't pay back money, he gives back the pay risk that he had made up. So that's not ribbis. Everyone agrees. Of course, you could prepay for fruits and you get the fruits when you're supposed to be. That's called Tzad Echad Beribis. Sometimes it's going to be Ribis. Sometimes it's not going to be Ribis because he's not making up with him to pay money, just pay risk. So the Brisa is going like Rabbi Yehuda who holds Tzad Echad Beribis is Mutter. That doesn't contradict Rav. Rav holds like the Chacham who holds Tzad Echad Beribis. is going to be Aser. So it's not a contradiction on the Brisa, from the Brisa on to Rav. The time of the Brisa, it's a Machlekes. Harisha, you know, Yishabach of someone was trying to collect from his friend a hundred dinar. So his friend made his field into a sale, meaning, the like Grash explains, that if I don't pay you back till the designated day, you know what? You could keep the field for the money that I owe you. Now, it depends what is being done with the field in the interim. If during that time period, which a guy made up a certain amount of time, if I don't pay you back, you could keep it, Mr. Lender. If the seller which is the owner, the borrower, 
If he's eating from the Paris in that interim period, well, that's mutter. That's okay. It's his own field. If lekech echol Paris says the Tanakama, oh, also the Chacham say, if the buyer is eating the produce in the interim, in the interim that's forbidden because what's going to happen is maybe he's not going to end up selling it to him. He's going to end up giving back his money. Comes out that this was a loan and this guy was eating the Paris as ribbis. So the Chacham say, and this is what's called Tzadach and Ribbis. It might have been, might not have been, depending if it's going to be a sale or not. Chacham is saying, this is what Rav says, I hold like, like a Chachamim. It would be also. Oh, he's the town of the Brayse. He says, no, even if the bar is in the Paris, it's permitted. What do you mean? Retroactively might be Ribbis because it, it's not a sale, it's a loan. That's okay. It's only Tzadach and Ribbis. And Omelam Yehuda, Yehuda says to the Chachamim, he says, what do you mean? Maisa of Ben Benzayin. There was a story with Baisa Benzayin and Shasa Sadeu Mechar. He made he did this this situation. He had a loan and he wasn't sure if he could pay back, and he made his field into a a, 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 a conditional sale. Appear with Elizabeth Nazari, the great town of Elizabeth Nazari. And the buyer was eating the payers. You see, it's something that's allowed to be done. And what they said to Misham Raya, from there's a proof. You got the story wrong. It was a seller who was eating the payers, which is the borrower and not the buyer. So therefore, that's always permitted. Okay, but says Gemara, my Benayu. What's the difference? In other words, what are they disagreeing about? The case that we're describing, that it might come to ribis, maybe it's not going to, meaning if it's going to ultimately be redeemed by the, by the borrower, it's going to be a situation of ribis. <laughs> and, 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 and if it's going to end up being a sale, well, it's not going to be ribis because it was always, it was always then the, the, the buyers. So, so therefore, based on the Bayes interpretation of the Machlekes, is what Shmuel is explaining why it's not difficult that the Bryce of Rishi on Rav, because the Bryce is going like a whole tzad echad is mutter, and 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 therefore you're allowed to do this this situation. Rav says the Bryce is not even like the Chacham, therefore the Bryce is not difficult on me. However, Rava Amar, Rava actually says, um, and Lishitasai, because Rava had explained <coughs> that you see from the Bryce of Rishi like Rabbi so he actually says no. He says it's not true. You wouldn't be able to give such an answer because <laughs> Rabbi Hud himself actually does not permit tzadech beribis. What do you mean? Because ribis amanas lahachzik benayu. The difference between them is actually a different concept. That Rabbi Hud would not permit tzadech beribis only on the condition that the money, if it turns out to be that if it's not a sale. He's going to give back the payers that he ate. That's where Rebuda says mutter. And even so, the Tanakhama says it's also because when you're eating lamaisa, you're eating ribbis, and you did the isser to go pay back ribbis now, is, 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 is still an isser then, and then doing a nitig lasse. But, but he's still, so, so Rabbi says that's not true. The, the, what you're trying to say is not even, is not even the machlekes. Machlekes is only because ribbis abanas, lahachzer, that would be the machlekes, and therefore that wouldn't be able to be used to defend Rav from the. Uh, from the Bryce. Okay, now, but, but now, Amr Rav, going back to what we said before, he says, Hash to the Amr Bianai. Now the Rabbiyane says, regarding the payment, the terminology we're going to say here might be a little bit like, you just want to like pay attention to what the wording is, because it's tourist language, and then Rashi is going to explain what it is, but now the Rabbiyane said, remember we quoted Rabbiyane's teaching, which was the third thing that we learned out from the Bryce of Rabbi he said regarding the payment that the item and the money is the same. Meaning, we said just like when you go and you um, prepay for an item. So I'm paying $100. You're going to give me uh, my water. I'm getting water from the water company, from the, the, the fresh water we have over here in the shul. I'm paying $100. And you give me water for the next few months. Now, price of water might go up. That's okay. And says Rabbi the same thing is, if let's say the water guy says, you know, I don't have any more water, I'll give you your money back. But uh, you're going to give me back now $150 because the price of water is, is what you're giving me back now. It goes up in price. That was Machlik Yisrael in Rabbiyan. Rabbiyan says, okay, mali hen, mali domain. It doesn't make a difference. So it says the Gemara, it says Rav, but now the Rabbiyan says, base. mali hen, mali domain, I'm reading. We say this concept of like, okay, who cares? Just like the item itself would be permitted, even though it goes up. So the monetary value... Based on that, you could say the reverse, which is, and again, the wording here is going to be difficult, and Rashi is going to explain it. Mali domain umali hain, we're reversing those terminology. Nami amrinan. What does that mean? So, like Rashi explains, we were just talking about 
the end of the transaction, when you're ultimately getting from the guy the item. In the beginning of the transaction, when you're making the condition, once the Yotza Hasha, once the market value is established, so we said you could be placing him, or you could make up with him how much you're, uh, you're paying for it. Even if the guy does not have pay rice, which we would say generally is a condition that the guy has to have, no, as long as you give him money, because just like uh, if the, 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 the monetary value of the money, which is really what the item is, I, I know it sounds confusing, but that's exactly what we have to explain. Rashi is going to explain that, which is the pay raise. If he had the dumbim of the mois, right? you're giving him money right now. Say, I'm paying you. You'll give me throughout the year my water, my apples, whatever this net. The demehen would be the pay raise because you're giving him money. That would be the item. The monetary value of what you're giving him, which is the pay raise, it would be permitted. That's the halacha we're saying all along Yatzah Shar. So also, when he has money in his hand, not pay raise, would also be permitted because the money and its monetary value are the same thing. Because what's the difference to me if he has wheat, which that's the dumbim for the moist that you're giving him, that right now he has it, money also, he could use that money to purchase Paris. So why don't Chazal come out and just say in stable markets all these things are not a problem if where the markets I'm saying he's. I'm saying there's a chiddush that's being said over here because generally when you talk about the problem about ribis is that if there's no payris in your possession, Mister Seller, it looks like a loan. If you have the item, it looks like a transaction. And that's really a lot of the theme of this parak of Ezu So, so the chiddush is, and it's actually, and we're going to ask in a second on this, but it seems to be a big chiddush that Rav is saying that yeah, even if the guy doesn't have the produce, he has the money. But you could use the money to purchase pet produce from someone else. That that's enough, says Rabbah. So that's a chiddush. Now we're going to ask on this in a second. But but because of this reason, So you could go ahead and set a price it, it, based on the market value on the in the street, which is the market value that's established by the donkey drivers who bring the produce to the market to sell in the cities. Even if the seller doesn't have payers, that's okay. Now, Rashi asks an obvious question. This seems to be in a Mufurisha Mishnah on later on the Ayn Beis Mabez, which we've quoted already previously in these Dafim. Yotza Hashar Paiskin. Once the market value is out, you could set a price. So, what's the Chiddush here that Rav is saying? Says Rashi, there is a Manda Amar later on that holds you actually cannot be Paisik on the Shar Shabashuk, which is the earlier market value. They explain the mission of Ayn Bez, based on when the guys who store the items or when the ships come, which is a much later time, a higher market value. Because our Mishnah doesn't say Shar Shebeshuk like Rava. It just says Yotza Hashar. So the Chiddush of Rava is that even the earlier Shar of Shebeshuk is sufficient. And, and why? Why is that, why is that okay? So that's the svar that he's saying, that he's explaining, because mali demehen, mali hen. Now, Rashi explains this, that we're inverting the language, and we're saying that um, mali demehen, mali hen, which the previous terminology was mali hen, mali demehen, was because at the time of the payment, the money that's being given back to the buyer, who's not getting his item, the guy doesn't have the item, says, so, you know what, I don't even have it, I'm giving you back money. So, the, 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 the money is the, the dumbim of the payers. Because really you're supposed to give them payers. You don't have. So the money is dumbim of the payers. So the term and the analogy the Gemara uses is, yeah, what it's better, hen from demehen. Meaning, just like hen, the item itself, is permitted if you give him the apples, the money is also permitted. That's when you're paying him back. But at the time when they're actually starting the transaction, the pisuk, when the guy's giving him money to get the wheat, um, which is the dumim of his money, the payers are called the demehen of the mois. It's a little bit confusing, but that, that's essentially what it is. You, the hain is the money. That's what you're giving him. And the payers would be the, the domain of the money. 
So there it's applicable to say, well, what's better, the 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 dumim of the moyes from the thing itself, which is just like that the the dumim is permitted if the guy had Paris right now. So here also the money itself should be permitted. So like what Rashi says, in short, Rashi says, when you're making up the price in the beginning of the transaction, everything is based on the buyer. Whereas by the terminology of the payment, everything's going after the seller because he's what's giving. So regarding the original condition that they were making the pisuk and they're giving him money to get wheat, so therefore the wheat is called the dumim for the, for the, for the buyer, which is the dumim of his money. It's just interesting. It's, it's, whatever, it's the monetary value of his money, which is what the Paris is. And regarding the payment, the money is what he's paying him back. That's the monetary value of the wheat, which is what he owes him. Akaponim, that's just explaining the terminology. But the main idea is that Rabbis Chiddush is, is that just like when you're making up to him, when there's a Shar Shabashok, if the guy has the item, that's good, even if he doesn't have the item. Because the money you're giving him is the equivalent of the item itself. And that's also not going to look like Rabbis. However, Eisvira Papa Rabbun the Brady Bishul Rab. They ask on Rava from the Brice of Rab Aishia that we quoted on Ahmed Aleph of Yatza Hashar. We're there, the market, the, the story we start off with the Gemara with on today's daf, where we said, hey, the guy wanted, so you owe me $100, give me wheat. And he says, nah, I don't have wheat. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll give you wheat. And oh, no, then he wanted, oh, I'll go for wine, I'll give you wine. We said, Kulam and Yeshle, all these cases, if he had the item, Mut is permitted. Im ain loy usr. If he doesn't have, it's usr. I, I thought you told me that the guy doesn't have to have it because you told me the money is like the item itself. So why is it usr? Um, he says, no, a fundamental difference that's mentioned a few times in this paragraph. There is an actual loan, right? Remember, the story was that he owed him $100. He owes him a money. There, if you don't have the item, that's, that's a biblical case of a loan. That's going to be usr. Hachazvini, here in our case, we're describing as uh, a, an actual sale. A sale is only is, is a much, it's a, it's a rabbinic case. And therefore there, even if he doesn't have it, says Rabbi, it's going to be mutter as long as he has the money, which would be able to use to purchase the item itself, and that would be permitted. Now, uh, another uh, interpretation, uh, Rabbi Rabbi Yisif, they say, my time, Amr Rabbana, what's the reason that the rabbis say, that you could go ahead and set a price uh, for an item that you want to prepay if the market value is out there in the street, not for Bishayinloi. Even though, meaning Rabbi just said a, 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 a shot. Now, Rabbi Yisif say a different shot. Why, even if the guy doesn't have it, is it permitted? Because the Amalek, because the bar could tell him, Shkila tubusech, take your favor, and throw it onto the thorns. My honestly, what are you benefiting me? I mean, like the problem is, ooh, the guy doesn't have it. He's giving you money and he's going to give you back more later. It looks like ribbis. Nah, it's not, not, there's no ribbis here. If I would have the money in my hand, I would be able to go to Hini and Shili, which are places which were near Pumbadisa, which is where Rabbi and Rabbi Yisim, who are saying this teaching, where they lived. In other words, wherever you go, you'd be able to find where to buy for these money because the, 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 shar, the, the market price has already been established. And therefore, I'm not gaining anything to be like a ribbis over here that I'm giving you money, I'm getting it back more. I could have bought for that price. I could have bought it here. So therefore, that's why uh, it's not a problem. As long as Yotz is Shar Shabashog, I even if the seller doesn't have the item, it's not a problem. Now, so I'm a buyer, but buyer has a problem with this. He says, wait a second, if that's the case, but El Miata, you should be allowed to borrow a saw of wheat to pay back a saw of wheat uh, for the same reason, same rationale. He could tell him, look, I don't need your favors. I don't need your favors. Somebody's going to tell him, you think that my wheat is going to, if I put it into my storehouse, you think rain would come down in it or let's say it would get heated up, where it would get ruined? No. I, so I'm not gaining anything. If I lent you a, 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 my bag of flour and you give me back a bag of flour, no, you can't do it, say, because, oh, it might go up in price. It's ribbons. What team that you? What? I, if I would have put it into my pantry, it would, I would have gotten anything less? I mean, so, what would, so why is that Why is it any different than the story you just said? Malay says, no, Hassan Alva. When this lady borrows the bag of flour from her friend, that's a loan. We're talking about ribbis day rice, so that's more hummer. And therefore, we say it's problematic to give back a saw because it's going to might go up in price. Hachazvini, we're discussing rabbinic ribbis, which is a sale. A sale is momeka. And there, even if he doesn't have it, as long as you have the money, that he could then purchase the item, it would be permitted. 
Now, Amalei Adabar Abba Rava, he asks, he says, wait a second. How could you say this svar of Maya Hani? Like, oh, what am I getting, getting from you? So therefore, as long as the Shar Shabashuk is out to you, even though you don't have it, I could go ahead and buy from you. But that's not true. You are gaining. Why are you gaining? Because vaha, you're gaining that when you're prepaying over here, because generally, you usually have to pay a broker fee for the middleman to go get you people that want to sell wheat. Comes out that you're gaining money by prepaying now. The guy, it's early. People are willing to take your money now. Um, you're gaining that money. So how can you say Maya Hani? So Amalei says, you're right. The Koyo of Leinami. We're talking about where the buyer has to actually give to the seller the broker fee that he shouldn't gain, that it should look like ribis because he's giving him money and he's going to get back more than what he gave. And the guy didn't even have the item. It looks like a loan. You're right. You have to give that. The Baal Shem, he says, no, you don't have to give that broker fee. Because Zuzi de Inchi, Inu Avdi Le Safsiruse, a person's money is his own broker, meaning the donkey drivers, they go to the people who have money to go bring the produce to it. So don't worry, if a guy has money, you don't have to get a broker. They're going to come looking for you. And therefore, you don't have to give it because he's not gaining that, and therefore it does not look like ribis at all. Now, continue on this theme regarding the peace, regarding when you're making up, uh, regarding a sale. So, Rabbi of Yosef and Amitabai, they both say, Haiman de Yob Zuzi, whoever gives money, Atara Kharifa, meaning they're, they're doing what's called this idea of pisuk. Pisuk is when you're making up, uh, a pre, you're prepaying for produce, where it's not a clear market price yet. It's the earliest market, which is right after the harvest season. The, the poor people who do the gleanings, they sell very cheap. This one sells a saw, this one sells two saw. And the Mishnah teaches later on the fine base and base that if the seller has, you let him make up a price with him, even though the, mar- the, the, the stable market has not been established yet. As the Mishnah teaches that uh, if this was the beginning of the guys who are doing the harvest, you could, you could make a price with him on his granary. But, so if you're doing the earliest market, Tzarech, the buyer has to be l'schazui l'beidari. He has to appear at the granary of the seller when he's threshing and is winnowing his produce by the granary. And that's why we're picking the early uh, early market because there you cannot make a, a price only for a guy who has a gyron, which because if it, was a, if it was a set market, that we said even if the guy doesn't have, you could do it. So, so therefore, your guy has to appear by the guy's granary. says, Lamai, why does he have to appear by the guy's granary? If it's to literally acquire it, that the seller should not be able to back out. But, but just appearing is not acquiring. He has to do Mashiach. What does have to appear there? And if it's to make that the seller should have to accept allow on himself a Mishapara, that he's going to get punished if he tries to back out. Even if he doesn't appear there, he's still going to get the punishment about backing out. So what's the point of that? You've got to show your face over there. The point is that the seller should have to get the punishment of backing out. So why does he have to appear over there? Because of if you give early, early in the market when it's just starting out, when you give money to a seller, this guy, the buyer, goes to two, three set meichrim and he gives money. So, because he's like, yeah, he doesn't know who he's going to get, you know, the IPO, what's he's going to get, you know, the, the best options over here. So that's what we're saying. If you appear to the seller, ah, some chadaite, so then... Each one of them is confident. He knows that he's relying on him, this buyer, and that his merchandise is going to be uh, end up selling and he's not going to back out. So therefore, if the seller backs out, yes, then you could say that he's going to get cursed with a mishapara. But if you don't show your face, he could tell the buyer, I mean, I said, I thought you found someone better. Uh, yeah, you, of course you gave me a down payment, but you, you, you do it to a few sellers. And I thought you found someone better. And therefore, that's why you, this mishapara would be specifically if he shows his face. Now, Amar Vashi says, but Hashadam, now that you say that if he shows his face is, yeah, Mishum the Mishmach it's because he's showing that he's relying on him. So then now, Philip, even if he doesn't show his face by the granary also, but rather, Ashkeche Beshuka, he finds him in the street at a later point in time. Vamale, and he says, look, I want you to know I'm relying on you. Oh, then you're right. Then there will also be a Mishapar because some Chedaita, obviously, he's relying on him. And he told him, and if it's not specifically a din in showing your face. Now, the, the, the main theme of this parak really is said in this next. Pithy phrase. Amr of Nachman, he says, Klol de Rebisa, the general rule regarding the prohibition about interest is Kol Agar Noterle. Any, uh, 
any uh, gain of a delay is also is forbidden. Meaning, if let's say the seller um, gives a cheaper price for the buyer because of waiting, meaning he prepays, but the seller doesn't have the item yet, that is a problem about ribbis because that's essentially what it is. It's a loan where, this, uh, where the, the, the contractor, the, 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 the developer says, look, I don't have money to build this, uh, this development. You give me now the down payment. And then in, in 12 months, I will give you a home. Guess what? He's using your money to make his development. If you were smart, you'd be the developer, not the, not the buyer. But he's taking your money. And now in 12 months, you'll get your home. So that's aganatile. He doesn't have the item right now. You're giving him money, and he gets to use your money, and I'll give you back more of your value that you're giving me later on. That's a problem about ribbis. Another teaching of Rav Nachman, he says, Haiman the Yob Zuzi Likira. If someone gives money uh, for a guy who sells wax, now because the dollar dollar, they're going for four uh, Zuz. Uh, you can get you get four uh, uh, um, uh, loaves of wax for a zuz. So Ba'amali, the seller says to him, "Look, you have look, Hey, hey, I'll give you five uh, loaves of wax uh, at a later point in time if you pay me now. Give me an early payment, and I'll give you five. So it depends. Is Nugabe if the seller actually has the wax? It's just not in town, or he lost the key, and he's pressed for money." So then showing it's permitted because that's similar to the case of lend me until my son comes with the mission later on that I am an alpha is going to teach that it's permitted because he really has it. It's really a sale. It's a transaction. It's not a loan. He just can't exit right now. But let's think about it. If he doesn't have it, then us it's going to be forbidden. It says Gemara Pshita. Obviously, that's a case of what we just described, of, of Agar Natrale. says Gemara Pshita. No, it's needed. The Isle Ashadoi Bamata. The seller himself, he has a credit himself in town. What would you say? Given this day, Asherai B'mata. Since the seller himself, he also gave money, and he made up with others on the wax that they should give him, and he has a credit. So you could really say, similar to the case of until my son come out, till I find the key, because he really has himself. That's a teaching. You know, since the seller himself has not collected what he bought, it's like it's not there, and therefore it's going to be forbidden. Okay, thank you to any time for hosting us.